Okay, today we're going to be studying about enthalpy of reactions and there are a few keywords that you want to know before we can embark on anything actually. The first one is going to be enthalpy. Enthalpy. The other one is going to be neutralization. We could look at combustion. Um, exothermic, uh, endothermic. Under the enthalpy of reactions that we're going to be to the, the experience we're going to be doing today, these are the keywords that we want to know before we get in there. Um, enthalpy. What's enthalpy? Heat. Heat. Yeah. Okay. Enthalpy is basically the heat content of a system. It content of a system. Neutralization. We've seen this all the way from GCSE. What is neutralization? To neutralize something. Balances pH. Sorry? Balances pH. Okay. Between Any acid, other one? Yes? Acid and alkaline. Thank you. A reaction between an acid and an alkaline. Any other? Okay. Combustion? What is the meaning of combustion? The point are completely in the air, no, in the oxygen. Oxygen. When a substance completely burns in oxygen, reacts with oxygen completely. Um, exothermic. What's the meaning of the term exothermic? Heat. Huh? Heat being given out. What's the meaning of the word exo? Heat given Exo, just exo. Oh, exo. It's, it's, uh, exo outside. You've heard of an exoskeleton with the insects? Something outside. So heat being given out is called exothermic. So uh, a chemical reaction in which heat is given out. Right. Endothermic, endo, taken in. A reaction that takes place with absorption of heat is called uh, um, an endothermic reaction. Um, heat absorbed. A reaction in which heat is absorbed. We're going to look at, uh, we can't look at all of these reactions today, but we're going to look at basically one of them. And um, we'll look at what we shall be focusing on is the exothermic um, reaction. We're going to have zinc, this is a solid, reacting with copper sulfate which is aqueous, to give us zinc sulfate, aqueous plus copper. What kind of a reaction is this? What kind of a reaction is this? When you look at it there. Uh, displacement. displacement. Why do you call it a displacement reaction? Because the... Yeah? Yeah, exactly. You have the copper in the copper sulfate, being displaced by the zinc. So this zinc, because it is higher in the reactivity series, displaces the copper and you have copper too. I mean zinc sulfate. Does that make sense? Right. Now, as this reaction takes place, some heat is going to be liberated. Okay? Now, uh, it's, our tasks, it's our task as chemists to find out how much heat is going to be liberated. Uh, we shall have, we could have a beaker there, okay, uh, we have some copper sulfate in there, copper sulfate solution. Let me add some few grains of uh, some zinc powder in there. Now obviously as they react, they are colliding with each other and the, react, the displacement reaction uh, proceeds with an elimination of some heat. And how am I going to find out that actually heat was given off from this reaction? Take, its temperature. Take the temperature change. Obviously, just before I add the zinc, I'll insert a thermometer in there. Okay? And most, most often, it's going to be the room temperature, the temperature of the surrounding. That will be the temperature of the uh, copper to sulfate. Now, when I add the zinc, powder into it and the reaction starts, 
Okay, we see the temperature starting to rise. Okay, and remember, I want to ensure uniform distribution of that heat. And what am I going to do? I'm going to make sure I stir the solution. Does that make sense? You stir it to make sure there's proper mixing, complete reaction between zinc and copper sulfate. Okay, now, um, at the end of the day, okay, assuming we started at maybe something like 25 degrees centigrade at the beginning of the reaction and it shot up, went up after a certain amount of time, probably after about, say, 15 minutes, okay, and went up to about 60 degrees centigrade, just giving an, an assumption, an example. Um, what's going to be the change in temperature? Change in temperature? Definitely, it's going to be 60 degrees minus 25, which is going to give us 35 degrees Celsius. Okay, and already you'd have worked out your, uh, the mass of zinc that you're going to add in there. Possibly if there was a mass of um, 6 grams of zinc. Okay, how do we work out the moles of zinc that we added to it? Mass over MR, so moles is going to be mass over MR, which is 6 over 65. And what we get there as our value for the number of moles? A number of moles is going to be? 0 0.0923. 0 0.0923. Let's just leave it as 0.092 moles. And we shall already have ascertained the uh, molarity of copper sulfate. Assuming the number of moles of copper sulfate is 0.05 moles as well. Okay? So over here, what we have is uh, 0 0.092 moles of zinc and 0 0.05 moles of zinc. Now, looking at that, in that reaction, which of them was completely used up? Copper sulfate. Copper sulfate was completely used up, okay? Simply because it has fewer moles. Now, in that case, what we do is we consider the fewer moles. Does that make sense? in our calculation later. Okay, now down to calculation of the standard enthalpy of the reaction. Number one, I want to work out the amount of heat. How do I get the amount of heat? Some use delta H or delta Q. How do I get the value of Q? MC delta T. Okay, it's going to be mass times specific heat capacity times the changing temperature. And what was the original mass of the zinc that we added there? We added 6 grams. Now, what's the total mass of the solution? 20, 25. Okay, we have 25. Because it's 25 cubic centimeters, the mass is going to be 25. Specific heat capacity is going to be? Specific heat capacity of water? Ah, uh, that's like nine, eight point. No, it's 4.2. And changing temperature? 35 plus. 35. Do we need to plus uh, three, 273? Sorry? Do we need to um, use uh, 35 plus 273? No, you don't need to do that. All you do is, because you're looking for the change in temperature. Okay? Temperature change. Right, so our Q is going to equal to, if you multiply 25 by 4.2 by 35, what do we get? 3675. Three, six, and, five. Seven, five. and the unit is going to be joules. So this is the heat that was liberated in this reaction. Now we're going to ask, yes? And what was C again? Is that the constant? Okay. Which one? And the C. C is a specific heat capacity. Okay? Right. Now, um, we work, we've already worked out the moles. So these moles, which moles? The 0 0.5 moles 
are the ones that liberate that amount of heat. Okay? 0 0.5 moles that reacted completely liberate um, 3,675 joules. What about one mole? And that's going to be our standard enthalpy of our reaction. So you're going to say 0 0.05 moles uh, will liberate 3,675 joules. What about one? More. One more to the barracks. Three, six, seven, five over zero point zero five. What are you getting over there? Seven three five hundred. Seven three five hundred joules. Now remember, because it's heat being given out, okay? The reaction is exothermic, so I'll have to include a negative sign over there. And I can present it in terms of kilojoules. So it's going to be 73.5 kilojoules per mole. And that's our standard enthalpy of um, reaction. So what are the main things that we're looking out for here? First of all, um, we established our equation and you want to understand the fact that zinc is reacting with copper sulfate to give you zinc sulfate and copper. So the copper sulfate which is uh, blue in color turns colorless with deposition of brown solid at the bottom. Okay? Right. Now as the reaction takes place we had our initial temperature which is roughly about room temperature when we added the zinc, the temperature started to rise. Why? Because the reaction was taking place. The molecules were colliding with each other, and heat was being liberated. And the evidence was that was the rise in temperature. Very important, we need to get the temperature difference between, within a specific time. Okay? Right. Now, um, next, we work out the moles that reacted. The moles of zinc, we discover we had six grams, okay, that we added to it. So we get six over the relative molecular atomic mass of, of zinc. Those are the moles. But we discover zinc had more moles than copper sulfate. And obviously, logically, we have to understand that because zinc, uh, copper sulfate has fewer moles, okay, and zinc has more moles. Only 0 0.05 moles of zinc are going to react with 0 0.05 moles of copper sulfate because the reaction ratio is 1 to 1. The other ones won't react. They will just remain in the solution. Does that make sense? Right. Now, that's going to help us over there where we come and say, okay, um, the heat that was given off is given by the mass of the solution times the specific heat capacity, times the te change in temperature. We assume that the specific heat capacity is that of water, because when we get the copper sulfate, we dissolve it in distilled water. And much of it, of that solution is basically water. Does that make sense? And very little of the copper sulfate which are dissolved therein. Okay, so when we multiply the mass of the solution by the specific heat capacity and the change in temperature, what we get is 3675 joules. Now, this amount of energy is what was liberated by 0.05 moles. But we want to find out how much heat is liberated if one mole okay, reacts. And therefore, that's why we say 0.5 moles liberate that amount of energy, 3675. What about one mole? One mole is going to be 36. 3675 divided by 0.5, and that's an energy. Now, do not forget that because the reaction is exothermic, you have to indicate that there's a, there's a negative sign there, okay? And convert the joules into kilojoules per mole. And basically, that is it.